Medieval pendant found in a garbage pit may hold the bones and relics of a saint. These are some of the uh, Byzantine items that were used by, especially by the knights, uh, and then by, of course, uh, regular lay people. This one has uh, a knight on a horse slaying a dragon. That is St. George. He is the uh, patron saint of England as well as Russia. St. George, the dragon slayer. And uh, the other side has a cross and it has a chain uh, that goes around the person's neck. And you see that, uh, you know, it fits in the palm of my hand. So it's pretty big. It's made of silver. This particular one is made of silver. And it has a little, oops, sorry, thing uh, it, that closes the, there's nothing in here, but you can put things in there um, and then close it up. Okay, this is St. George the Dragon Slayer. And uh, I got this from a store that sold Byzantine things. It's not from the Byzantine era, but it's a copy of it. That's St. George. And then I have another one with various saints. You see the Virgin Mary holding the baby Jesus up there and some other saints as well. Okay. And on the other side, of course, you have, again, the cross, the chain that goes around the person's neck. And this is the sliding entrance, the door that um, there's nothing in there, but you can put things in there like relics or the uh, candle from the uh, Feast of Resurrection. And this again now is uh, they see, it means uh, the uh, prayer. Uh, they have Jesus enthroned, and then you have the Virgin Mary right next to our Lord Jesus Christ and St. John the Baptist. And this uh, mural of this icon is found in the Church of Holy Wisdom in Istanbul, which used to be, of course, Constantinople, on the second floor. Uh, on the uh, facing the altar on the right hand side of uh, where the women used to sit. The women used to sit separate from the men on the top floor. The men used to go uh, to the ground floor. So um, this is a cross that was given to me by an abbot from the Holy Mount Athos. And this cross has the uh, relics of three saints. One of them is Saint Justin Martyr and uh, Saint uh, Justinian. And uh, I don't wear this because you have to take it off when you take a bath. And um, I don't want to lose it. Uh, and this, this is a piece of rock from the Mount of Olives that a nun that used to live there, she lives here now. She's an iconographer, used to, uh, she used to live there. She gave that to me. And these are other little things that you can wear around your neck. This one is very tiny. It has the uh, Virgin Mary holding the babe Jesus. And um, this is St. Spiridon, the Bishop of Trimithundos. His uh, relics are found in uh, the uh, island of Corfu. And they have little bits of their shoes. There they go, that thing on the bottom. Little bits of their shoes because they find that their shoes are worn out off. And um, because they go around uh, performing miracles. And that's the, one of the signs that they're out and about among us, looking just like you and me, that and the, the, the proof is that their shoes are worn off, as if they're walking around. Now, for the knights of England, who used to wear these pendants close to their hearts, under their armor, obviously they wore them under their armor, close to their hearts, for protection. They were going into battle. They didn't know if they would be coming out alive. And... Uh, they weren't foolish and they weren't afraid or, you know, um, stricken by the fact that somebody would make fun of them because they had a pendant of a saint over their heart for protection. Obviously, for them to do this, they had great belief in these saints. These were warrior saints. St. George was a soldier in the Russian, uh, the uh, Roman army. So was St. Demetrius. And they had St. George and St. Demetrius as their protector saints. 
uh, because, of, of course, they obviously believed in their miracles and their protection. Now, how do I know that the British uh, knights used to wear these under their armors close to their hearts? I learned this from the smithy on the basement of Warwick Castle. We had gone there to tour the castle. You start from the basement, you go up to the upper floors. And he uh, had these things behind him on a shelf as he was making a chain link armor. And I asked him, I said, because, you know, you, this line was going so slow, you just, I just stopped there in front of him. We were stopped in front of him. I asked him, who are those saints? He said, we don't know who they are. We just know that the knights used to wear them under their armor over their hearts when they were going to battle for protection. And I told him, one, the slaying the dragon in St. George, and the other one that's on a, uh, slaying a, a, the uh, lying down on the floor of the demon is St. Demetrius warrior saints of the Roman army. He says, oh, we didn't know who they were. We only know, knew that the uh, knights wore them in, in battle under their armor. So that's how I know this was taking place. And this is again St. George, the dragon slayer. He uh, martyred, and he martyred very at a very young age, but he is full of miracles. Um, so Again, you have to be very careful that these medieval pendants that may hold the, the bones of a saint, you can't throw them away, especially in garbage. You have to be very careful and um, uh, that you don't uh, desolate them. Now, Tom Metcalf of Life Science published this. He says, neutron imaging revealed that a medieval pendant from Germany holds fragments of bone, possibly those of a saint. And... Um, the image of this more than 500 hours of restoration work by Lisa to remove the corrosion revealed a pendant of gilded copper decorated with enameled portraits of Jesus, Mary, and saints. For 900 years, so we're talking about a time when the church was basically united. For 900 years, a corroded medieval pendant discovered in a trash heap in Germany has been hidden in, as a religious treasure tiny fragments of bone, possibly from the body of a saint, a new study has found, and further studies might reveal which saint it was. Such medieval requiries, containers or shrines of the bones or other relics of saints, often contain a strip of parchment or paper with the saint's name, known as an authentic or cedula. But the researchers have yet to find one. Study first author uh, Matthias Hensel, a restorer at the Leibniz Center for Archaeology, Lisa for short, in the German city of Mainz, told Life Science in an email. That does not mean it's not there, however. To peer inside, the team used neutron tomography, which creates three-dimensional images when subatomic neutrons are absorbed by materials, in this case, the pendant's case and anything it contained. And although this technique did not reveal an authentic, further imaging could show such a strip and perhaps letters written on it. Maybe we'll find it out in the next years with other instruments and high resolution, Hensel said. Who knows? We will try. The study described the investigation of the pendant was presented at the METAL 2022 conference of the International Council of Museums Committee for Conservation, which was held in Helsinki in September. It has yet to be published in peer reviewed journal. Medieval pendant? Archaeologists uncovered the palm-sized pendant, so it's just about the same size as I was holding a St. George, as I was holding before when I was showing you. And it's a palm-sized pendant in 2008, and when they uncovered it during an excavation of a medieval rubbish pit in Mainz, Germany. The pit was located in a court at a noble palace that dated from a high Baroque period in the early 17th century. Though it contained mostly pottery, the pendant was found in a layer of the pit that dated to the 14th century, before the later palace was built over it, Hainzel said. However, the distinctive artistic style of the pendant suggests that it dates to the 12th century and that it was already old when it was thrown away, he said. Its style also indicates that it was probably crafted in the workshop near the city of Hanover, about 125 miles, 285 kilometers north of Mainz, that is known to have made similar objects. Hansel and his colleagues at Liza spent about 500 hours removing the thick layer of corrosion with diamond-tipped grinding tools and other fine mechanical devices to reveal the 
quatrefoil shaped pendant of copper covered with gold leaf and enamel images of Jesus, Mary, and medieval saints. A conundrum quickly merged. The pendant seemed hollow, but opening it would destroy it, so how would they look inside? They decided to take x-rays, which revealed a cavity within the pendant. And as I show in the, the copies of the Byzantine things that I uh, have, uh, again, as, as we said, there the thing on top slides, and you can put things inside. And, uh, of course, the chain uh, enables you to hold it around your neck. So, um, the x-rays, organic images, organic and inorganic materials, such as textiles and bones, are optically outshone by the surrounding metal and enamels, he said, but neutrons show an almost contrary absorption behavior to x-rays. The metal and enamel of the pendant absorbed most of the x-rays and nothing else was visible, he said. Neutron tomography. Unlike the energized electrons used in x-ray techniques, neutrons have no electric charge and can penetrate deep into materials such as metals. Neutrons are also strongly scattered by hydrogen atoms, so neutron tomography makes high contrast images of materials derived from living organisms that contain hydrogen, study or co-author Burkhard Schillinger said, an instrumental scientist at the Technical University Munich Heinz Meyer Leibniz Center, MLZ. When the researchers examined the cavity of the pendant with neutron imaging, they could see clearly that it contained five small bags, probably of linen or silk, that held fragments of bone, Hensel said. Now, I would uh, venture to say, since there are many uh, images of saints on that pendant, it could be five sachets that hold five, this, the, rem, the uh, relics of five saints. Just like my little cross that you saw before that showed that had the relics of three saints. Now, the desist discovery shows the pendant was a phylactery, a type of amulet that housed saintly relics and was supposed to give protection to those who wore it. That was a revelation to Hensel, who was not expecting to find human bone, although he'd already spent hundreds of hours restoring it. He said, from the beginning, this was a really great object from the Middle Ages. And the next stage will be to use neutron imaging to search for the parchment or paper strip inside the pendant that could reveal the name of those saints whose bones it contains. So far, the pendant has been exposed to imaging neutrons for a total of just over seven hours. Schillinger is hopeful that further observations with neutrons could reveal the strip and any letters on such a strip, which were probably written in iron gall ink, a mixture of iron salts and acids from vegetable sources. Maybe double the exposure time, maybe triple, will divulge the saint's name, he said. This is by Tom Metcalf on Live Science. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box.